primetime show, New York, Nashville, San Francisco. We love to watch the kickoff as the game begins. Pretty cheerleaders and last minute wins. The screaming crowd and the linebacker stairs, scrambling quarterbacks and receivers in the air. Big hits are coming, the backs are cutting inside. Everybody turns it up. Good evening for Madison Community Television and Daniel Hand High School Tiger Football. This is Kent Sprague with Jerry Johnson beside me, Paul Sprague behind the camera, and Lynn Richards uh, producing this um, uh, telecast. Tonight's game is uh, game number eight of the season at Strong Field. Uh, Daniel Hand High School taking on the uh, uh, Notre Dame of West Haven team, and both teams are 7-0 and at this point. Jerry, we might mention very briefly uh, that the Notre Dame West Haven team is ranked number one in the state, all classes, uh, all schools, uh, all sizes of schools. So they are a very good football team. And in the power rankings, they're also ranked number one. And Daniel Hand is uh, picked anywhere from a two to three touchdown underdog for this game. So it will be a tough ball game. Uh, can you give us a little bit about uh, Hand? Hand has uh, a thin squad, and they have some injuries, and they have some new injuries you might tell us about. Yes. Uh, this Notre Dame team, Ken, as you alluded to, is arguably uh, uh, possibly the best high school football team ever assembled in the state of Connecticut. Uh, uh, the Hand coaching staff feels that they're even better than some of Hand's uh, finest uh, undefeated teams. Uh, if Hand had all their men uh, healthy for tonight's game, uh, uh, they would really have a tremendous contest going tonight uh, uh, between these two undefeated teams. That, however, is not the case, and you can't cry over spilt milk. Uh, what Hand has to do is work with the personnel that they have. But uh, they have tremendous injuries. Derek Dene uh, uh, is still out. He may be suited up tonight, Kent, but uh, he probably won't be back uh, uh, until next week. Scott Kamkowski, as we all know, is out for the season. Peter Clark is back, but he's really only at 50% speed to, uh, due to his uh, arm uh, operation that he had earlier. Yeah, he did play some last week, but that, not a lot. That's correct. Uh, Tim, Tim Cunningham is still out. Um, Mike Barilla is suspended for two games. Uh, Joel Donnelly has a fractured toe, so he's going to be marginal today. Derek Dene has mono. Uh, Mike Anderson, a defensive tackle, is, is out with a knee injury. So um, uh, you have a tremendous uh, uh, number of starters that are out today, which means that Hand is going to have to make some tremendous adjustments. Uh, uh, Rob Dezima is going to move from outside linebacker uh, into defensive tackle. Filling in for his vacated position will be Matt Gentile. Uh, Matt Gentile will become uh, the rover outside linebacker. And filling in for Matt's vacated position will be Scott Hevesy. Uh, so what that means is all your key players are going both ways. They're missing a lot of key players. And in the backfield, they only have two running backs, Eric Hamill and um, uh, Chris Doraz. Uh, Chris, uh, sorry, sorry, Chris, Chris Doraz. So what that means is, is that Han's not going to be able to shuttle in uh, backs. And if one of those backs gets hurt, they're going to have to go to one back offense. If both of those backs get hurt, I don't think there's another... Uh, uh, a team member that's taken a, uh, an offensive handoff. So uh, they've got to stay healthy tonight, and, and they're going to have to really play over their heads. Uh, some pressure is really kind of off them. They're not expected to win this game. They're expected to get blown out. So what Hand has to do is come into this game, and up front defensively, they've got to try to chop these guys down and have the linebackers in the secondary uh, uh, make the tackles. And offensively, uh, what they're going to have to try to do is, is, is throw, on, uh, throw the ball on these guys and, and see if they can pick up five and eight yards of crack. So you expect quite a bit of passing from uh, Scott Hevesy, quarterback. Today. I do, and, and if you recall last week, uh, I think Scott had about 200 yards in the air uh, as opposed to 70 yards on the ground. Uh, uh, the hand, I think, will be capable of, of throwing uh, against the Notre Dame team as long as the offensive line can, can sustain their blocks. This should be a very good game if uh, Hand can stay in it with a thin squad and a number of injuries. And uh, we will soon have this game underway. The uh, opening ceremonies are about to get underway, and uh, we will show as much of it as we can tonight. The 
captains are now in the middle of the field for the coin flip before the game. And Jerry, before we get underway here, you might explain a little bit about the offenses and defenses we'll see. Yeah, offensively for Notre Dame, uh, they've got uh, uh, a tremendous weapons. They have a fullback, uh, uh, Salah, uh, who's uh, 230 pounds. Uh, he's, he's one of their big weapons uh, who's being recruited by uh, uh, some real key Division I college teams. They have a good tailback who's 210 pounds. They have a quarterback who's 6'3", who's an excellent passer. Their offensive line averages 235 pounds. Uh, what they're going to do is try to run the ball right down Hand's throat what Han has to do defensively is they're going to try to cut the Notre Dame men down up front and allow the linebacking core and the uh, uh, secondary to make the tackles. Uh, 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 offensively, what Han is going to try to do is show uh, Notre Dame some different formations, uh, some things they normally haven't seen. They're going to run with trips. They're going to go uh, uh, with spreads, uh, uh, try to throw the ball, uh, 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 pick up some yardage at, at five, uh, eight yards a crack. Uh, 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 Han uh, really is outmatched in, in in all areas except for the kicking game. The one thing Han has going for them tonight is they're playing a strong field. Uh, this year they're undefeated versus last year having three losses, uh, uh, and they can throw the ball against Notre Dame. So I think that that's going to be the real key is, is if Han can uh, uh, try to sustain some drives, which is going to be very, very difficult, they're going to have to do it in the air tonight. We are about ready to begin game number eight of the season against two teams both of which are 7-0. and oh. And Sean Lynch will kick off for a hand to Notre Dame to begin the game. Option to take the ball on the 35 yard line. Looks like they will do it to begin the game in good field position for the first possession of this game. Ken Han's going to be playing uh, uh, their, their traditional 4 4 defense, but they're also going to give a 4 3 look. Uh, what they want to do is try to stop uh, the power. Uh, 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 dive off tackle uh, action of Notre Dame and try to force Notre Dame to go to the air. So Notre Dame lines up in an eye with their big running back at the fullback position, the up position. And he gets the ball, carries over left guard, left tackle, two or three yard gain. I see Tom Malik is in at the inside linebacker. Um, Jerry, he hasn't played for a couple of games. No, he hasn't. I talked with his father last week and, and I also saw Tommy here at a youth football game and he's he's probably at 90 95 percent tonight so so that that's very positive to have time back we will pick up the defensive people for a hand as we progress the swing to the left this time and the man is met no game lost a yard or so what a super job by the hand defense one of the things hand doesn't want to do with their defensive formation is allow Notre Dame to get outside. If they get outside, there's an awful lot of room. That time there was some penetration in the backfield that slowed their tail back up and Hand had a tremendous swarming defense working towards the ball that time. Chris Dara has a Matt Gentile in on the tackle up on the front line for Hand now. I see Derek Dene, number 91, in for the first time all year in this series. Third down and seven for Notre Dame, looking to throw, going to the right side. Complete pass, out of bounds, knocked out by uh, Lawler. And that's very close to a first down. I think that will be a first down, Ken. All he had to do was, was get to the 45-yard uh, line. It depends on where they mark it. If they mark it just short of the 45, he got enough for the first down. So a first down for uh, Notre Dame. Into the line for hand are uh, number 74, Mike Salmani, is, and Peter Clark, Derek Dene. Some names from the past, Kent. Uh, I don't uh, get the, the fourth number down. Uh, I believe that's uh, Rob Nazima is the fourth man down on the front line for hand. First down, Notre Dame at the 45. 
Turn to the left this time, and a good running back. Breaks on tackle. Finally, it's snowed under after about a four-yard gain. And what we're seeing is what Notre Dame likes to do. They'll, they'll throw the ball when they have to, but what they like to do is run the ball down your, down your throat. Power football team. That was a power eye to the left, uh, uh, giving to their, uh, their big back, number 44. And again, Hand is making some good penetration, and, and they're stopping him in the line of scrimmage. That time, the big back was able to break a tackle, uh, uh, but not before the linebacker crew was able to make the stop. Tim Hennessy now into the front line. Uh, also Chris Holt. And they're running it on every play, and he's cut down going to like this linebacker position. He plays uh, he plays a linebacker position from his free safety. I think he's going to have some fun tonight. That was a great job of Matt getting low. And that's what Hand has to do defensively tonight. They've got to stay low because they've, they've got some tremendous size uh, uh, on the other side of the field. But uh, uh, when you stay low, the low man usually, usually wins. That time Matt was able to get under his pad, stay nice and low. We're early in the game. No score. Uh, Notre Dame has got the ball first. They made one first down and they have third and about six coming up. by Doris, and also uh, uh, there was some great penetration. It was sort of a semi-screen that they were setting up. Uh, great penetration, uh, 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 good catch by number 44, but Doris is right there. That'll bring up fourth down and a long three for Notre Dame on the first possession. Well, I think you can see that the hand defense is emotionally up for this game, Kent. Uh, uh, they're having some fun out there. So that was an excellent catch by Notre Dame, a one-handed catch, but the uh, man was cut down and uh, they have a man back in front formation with three blockers ahead of him, back to receive for hand are Hamill and Lynch. And it's a good kick. Uh, it's going to hit at about the 22 and roll and is covered at about the 16. Daniel Hand has their first possession of the game at the 17 yard line. And that was a good job by Eric Hamill uh, to stay away from that ball because the last thing that Hand can do against a Notre Dame team is make some mistakes. That's a live ball on the punt and it was it was kicked short. If he had touched the ball, Notre Dame could recover. What, one of the things that Hand has to do is force Notre Dame to make mistakes. possession of the game. Notre Dame has been stopped by hand and has a punt. And starting a drive at the 17, Scott Evans, the quarterback. And off this time to uh, Eric Campbell, a tailback across the 20. But a three-yard gain. Campbell is not ready at the 20 for three yards. And what that was was just a lead dive where uh, Doris uh, tries to pick up the linebacker uh, and, and Hamill breaks off the block. Uh, they're coming out with their traditional offense, but I think we're going to see some, uh, uh, some surprises tonight. Chris Doris at fullback, Eric Hamill at tailback, Scott Evansey quarterback. The center is his brother Jim Evansey. Scott Evansey looking to throw, rolling to the side, and he's snowed under. Back at near the 10-yard line. Didn't have much time. Now that's the thing that, that Hand has to do tonight. They've got to give Scott Hevesy time to throw the ball because that's really how they're going to be able to control the ball is, is with the short passing game. If the Hand offense can't give uh, Scott time to throw, uh, they're just not going to get their offense revved up tonight. The ball's about about the 12, third down and about 14. Hevesy this time hands off up the middle. Doris carries forward for a couple of yards. But that's going to bring up fourth down for Hand. Fourth and long and deep in their own territory. And 11. Sean Lynch goes back to punt. The Notre Dame drops uh, one receiver back near the 50 and 10 men up to rush the punter. It's a good snap and uh, end over end kick. It'll bounce about the 40 yard line and uh, it's gonna roll dead down by Chris Doris at the 40. Notre Dame gets the ball for their second possession of this game. We have 644 left first quarter, no score. You know, the one thing that, that uh, uh, is even between these two teams is the kicking game. And so far the kicking game is not doing the job, Ken. Uh, Notre Dame is getting good field position. Notre Dame has one man split wide to the left and I formation behind the quarterback. Hand off to the tailback, and he dives forward for about a yard. 
cut down low. In on that tackle was number 40, Chris Holt, that came in and got him by the ankles. And that's what they've been working on all week, I'm sure, Kent, is staying low, especially up front, trying to cut these guys down, allowing the, the backers to clean it up. In the secondary for hand are uh, Ryan Doraz on the far side, uh, Peter Lawler on the near side, Scott Hevesy uh, playing center field, handed off to the tailback going left, and not much there. The first man in there was Malik, it makes the tackle. And what that was was a counter trap, Kent, and, and that's designed to get the linebackers to flow one way and come back uh, against that grain, and, and Malik wasn't fooled. Uh, uh, Joe was right there, he stayed at home and, and came up, kept his shoulders square, scraped inside the hole and made, made a nice hit. Malik and Dezima are in on that play. In the center of the line for a hand are Derek Dene and Rob Dezima. Now looking to throw straight back, and he's going down the middle, and it's an overthrown, incomplete pass, and a flag comes in late. The receiver was knocked down. They may have an interference call. If they do, that'll be a big, big break for Notre Dame because Hans defense did a tremendous job uh, uh, keeping them in, in three downs to, to only two yards. So the pass was not near a receiver, but the receiver did go down. It is going to be pass interference against Hand. That will give Notre Dame a first down. Big, big break for Notre Dame because Hand's defense is really up to the test tonight so far. They're doing a great job. That time they let him off the hook with, with, uh, uh, with an interference call. That takes the ball down to the 23. First down for Notre Dame. Notre Dame had a power eye this time, and their tailback uh, carries it across for about two yards, uh, about the 21. Salah, their uh, fullback, uh, carries the ball a great deal, but they haven't given him much room to run yet. We're inside of five minutes in the first quarter. No score, but Notre Dame is at the 21. Backfield again for Notre Dame. And the men move early. I saw a hand man go across the line of scrimmage. We'll see if he was drawn on. I don't think he broke the plane though, Ken. And I did see some Notre Dame uh, offensive linemen uh, 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 get off the mark pretty quick. But Notre Dame seems to be clapping. It looks like they're going to uh, uh, assess it against hand. That's going to be an offside encroachment against hand. Take the ball down to the 16. Second down and a uh, long three for Notre Dame. Ball at the, at the 16 yard line. This time Notre Dame splits one man wide right and one man a slot and hand off the tailback and Gentile meets him in the backfield. And underneath the play is number 78 for a hand. 78 is Tim Hevesy. Well, that's the way you, you answer a penalty like that, Ken. And you know, one of the reasons why my hand was off sides is they're not waiting for Notre Dame to come out uh, after them. What they want to do is go after Notre Dame. So they were off sides because they're trying to they're trying to get in there and mix it up. And, and that was a great job that time defensively uh, stopping him in the backfield. About a two yard loss. Third down and about five for Notre Dame. Two men split to the right again for Notre Dame. And the quarterback hands off to the ball carrier who is swinging to the right. And he's carrying some ball, <laughs> some tacklers with him. He gets across the 15. He's short of a first down, but a gain of a couple. You know, he has to set the speed, Kent. Uh, he's so big that he really doesn't look like uh, uh, he has any speed, but he really does have some speed. He, 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 he seems to be uh, loafing in there, but uh, uh, it's, it's deceiving because of his size. Here's the first uh, big play of this game, Jerry. Uh, fourth down and two for Notre Dame uh, across the 15, about the 14. Now, I'm sure that's not going to be anything fancy. They're probably going to run a power eye and, and try to run it between guard and tackle. And what Han has to do up front is chop down those linemen and have those linebackers coming up real fast to fill the hole. Power eye for Notre Dame, strong to the left. And it's handed off to the tailback, and he's got an opening. He's heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. 
he did break that uh, line of scrimmage and nobody there to uh, clean it up. So Notre Dame scores. What happened was uh, Ant's defensive line was, was stuffing up the middle and uh, uh, all he did was bounce it uh, outside the end and it was open outside the end. So with 2.52 left first quarter, Notre Dame scores first. Six to nothing with a conversion try coming. Well, I'll tell you, so far, Ken Han has nothing to be ashamed of. They're, they're playing a powerhouse tonight. Uh, they're out, man, and they're really doing the job. Two, two penalties hurt them on that last try. That's right. Uh, Notre Dame's coming out for a two-point conversion try. And they're pitching to swing to the right, and a man has uh, got the end zone. Two-point conversion is good. That's their uh, big tailback, big fullback. You know, that was a good job by Matt Gentile. I don't know if you saw it, Kent, but there were two lead blockers, and Matt Gentile took out both of the blockers. So sometimes it's not making the tackle. It's taking away the interference to allow uh, uh, the, the additional pursuit and flow of the defense to make the hit. But that time uh, uh, he was able to, to get into the end zone before the hit was on. After the first score of the game, we'll kick off back to Hand, Eric Hamill on the far side, Sean Lynch on the near side. There's a low bouncer and it's fielded at the 32 by uh, Gentile. Well, Matt didn't want to take any chances, Kent. Uh, if he tried to pick up the ball and run with it and didn't have a good handle on it, uh, he, he could have caught the ball up. He did the smart thing by giving the offensive player the opportunity to take over the first and 10 from the 33 yard line. Ball is at the 33. Daniel Hill, second possession of this game. Time to Hamill on the left side, makes a cut and uh, gains about a yard, and that's all. Again, I haven't seen Hand do very much from the standpoint of a different look with either trips or, or spreads, and I think either on this series or the next series, we're going to see uh, uh, a Hand give Notre Dame a different look. They haven't given Notre Dame a different look as yet. Notre Dame is an excellent offensive team and also a very strong defensive team. Not many teams have scored much against them. Chris Torres carries the ball across the 35, gains only about a yard. So those are tough yards in the middle of the line for him. Split wide to the right, uh, Matt Gentile slot right, and Scott Hevesy back looking to throw, uh, thrown across the middle, tackle immediately, short of a first down, complete pass to number 80, Peter McGrath. You know, that was a great play, Kent, because they had uh, two receivers wide to the right. Uh, it almost looked like uh, a kind of a half big screen where he threw back to the left. But uh, Notre Dame again uh, played great defense. Number 45 uh, wasn't fooled at all. He was right there. And these, John Hibbs, he had to get rid of that ball. He didn't have any more time. These guys are not making a lot of mistakes on the other side of the ball tonight, Kent. Fourth down and five. Hand will punt. Sean Lynch in the kick. And a good long kick this time. And it's going to be fielded at about the 27. And Hand has a lot of defensive men back there. Good coverage on that kick. That was a great job by the kicking team of Hand. And as we said at the onset, that's one of the things that uh, is pretty even between these two teams. Uh, and has an excellent kicking game, and, and, and the strong foot of Sean Lynch and the good coverage is what makes it work. It was a good long high kick. Uh, Field is at 27 and brought back about the 31. Notre Dame with the ball again. And we're inside of a minute left in the first quarter. Time uh, Notre Dame is stopped in the backfield. Looks like about a yard loss. That's uh, Rob Dezima on the bottom of that tackle. That was a great job by Rob. And you know, uh, he's playing a new position uh, tonight. He's been he's been an outside linebacker all season, and he moved in uh, because of Anderson at offensive tackle, and he made some great penetration, and he hit the back in the backfield. Great job. So about a yard and a half loss, and we're down to uh, 10 seconds and counting in the uh, first quarter, so Notre Dame is going to have to hurry to get this one off. They probably will not get it off before the quarter runs out. And there's the end of the first quarter with Notre Dame leading hand 8 to nothing, And they've played with them so far, except for um, 
couple of penalties there that hurt them on the Notre Dame drive that ended up in a touchdown. That's right. Uh, uh, they, they've only had a couple of running plays that have worked for them, and, and it's been outside, off tackle, outside the end, uh, but they've really stuffed the middle tackle to tackle. Second quarter, Notre Dame has second down and about 12. Motion man this time, and somebody jumped for a hand early. It was Mike Salmani who was a little eager to cross the line of scrimmage. Ken Hand cannot afford to continue making mistakes, so what they've got to do is play mistake-free football and force Notre Dame to make mistakes. They can't let Notre Dame off the hook. A dead ball foul that uh, brings up uh, second down and about uh, six. Second and seven at the 34. And off this time to the tailback, and Chris Holt has him by the ankles, uh, right at the line of scrimmage. Good tackle. Number 40, Chris Holt made that tackle, bring up third and five. I'll tell you, Kent, the defense is really doing uh, what they've been practicing all week uh, with the up front men <coughs> staying real low. Uh, chopping down uh, that interference and the linebacker core coming up real fast making the hit on the line of scrimmage. Peter Clark at number 18, Derek Dene, number 91, they're both in now. Mike Udicek uh, on the corner on this side. It's going to be a quick pass, a flag is down, incomplete pass, but a flag is thrown. Number 44 went in motion, Kent, and I think he turned up field before the ball was snapped. Let's see what the call is. That one's against Notre Dame. Well, I don't know what the call was, but at least it's against Notre Dame. I can't, I can't figure out those hand signals yet, Ken. <laughs> I got to work on that. That will bring up fourth and about six for uh, Notre Dame. And they will go in punt formation. Back for hand are Sean Lynch and Eric Hamill to receive. My penalty is declined, so that brought up fourth down. It was an incomplete pass. It was an illegal shift, he said, Ken. And then he turned up field too quickly. I think so. As, just as you described, I believe. And Hand is brushing the kicker and gets it out of there. Field it at about the 38. And a flag is thrown. That was Eric Hamill who fielded the ball. And uh, he may have signaled a fair catch and then started to run with it. Marched off against hand again. They're not playing mistake free yet. No, they're not. And, and what they've got to do is stop making these mistakes. No, no, Notre Dame has too many weapons uh, uh, to be able to also uh, uh, give them the orders that they don't deserve. This is a real key uh, offensive series, Kent. Uh, offensively, hand hasn't been able to really do much of anything. What they've got to do is show Notre Dame that they're capable of doing something with the ball. Here's now three receivers to the right. Now they're coming out with, with trips. Scott Hevesy looking to throw. He's being pursued and gets it away and comes diving catch, complete pass. Sean Lynch, about an eight-yard gain. You know, that was a great job by Scott Hevesy getting rid of the ball because he had a defender right in his face. And Sean Lynch, I might add, last year against Notre Dame, in Notre Dame, Sean Lynch was 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 injured. So he was a weapon that wasn't uh, able to be used last year, uh, who's, who's uh, obviously going to be used tonight. Great, great catch by Sean Lynch. A seven yard gain they spotted at the second and three for Ham. Three receivers to the right again for Ham. And it off this down to Chris Dorez who makes it cut to the 50. That should be a first down. That is a first down, Ken. So what they're doing, Ken, is they're giving Notre Dame uh, some formations and some looks that they really haven't seen all season. And what they want to do is spread out that defense uh, and, and start making some things happen. Is that hand first, first down? Yes, it is. I believe it is. That 
Gentile goes to the left, Sean Lynch to the right. And enough this time to Eric Hamill on the backfield, carry the forward for about two. That was a good job by Eric to pick up a couple of yards. He was able to win his scrimmage, and he was able to uh, use his momentum and, and power to, to gain a couple of yards. Good job. We have 10 minutes before halftime. Notre Dame is leading 8 to nothing. And is uh, across the midfield. Scott Hevesy looking to throw again, and he throws a low, incomplete pass. He's aiming this time for uh, tight end uh, uh, Mike Richard. And again, he had uh, some extreme pressure in the backfield uh, for Scott to, to get a hot arm tonight. What he's going to have to have is a little bit of time and a little bit of protection. The offensive line has got to give him a little bit more time. They have not, he has not thrown much of the tight end this year, uh, but that one was aimed for Mike Richard. What, what he wants to do uh, uh, to try to uh, get the quarterback a little time to throw the ball is they're not going to run a lot of deep patterns. They're going to run a lot of short patterns, and that's where your tight end comes in. Well, they're in motion. And Hevesy rolling to the left, looking to throw, and uh, incomplete pass. Uh, overthrown, aiming for uh, Lawler. That'll bring up fourth down and about eight. But you know, that time, Scott did have the protection. They sealed off the corner. Uh, the difference that time was there was great coverage on Lawler. He, uh, number 45 was all over him. Fourth down and eight for Han Sean Lynch back in punt formation. One receiver back at about the 20 for Notre Dame. And 10 men up to rush and good protection. And Lynch gets a high one, a spiral. Out of there, field is the 20-yard line, fair catch. Notre Dame gets the ball back with 9.36 left on the clock before halftime. Well, except for that uh, uh, series where, where Notre Dame was able to get a couple of penalties, Kent, and, and break one to the outside. Hand is playing uh, defensively very well, and, and they, just shown, uh, uh, they just showed offensively that they were able to move the ball a little bit. So uh, we've got a game here tonight. Notre Dame, obviously, is a very well-coached team, very well-disciplined. They don't make many mistakes, and they have excellent talent, both sides of the ball. Hand off this time to the tailback, and he goes up and over, gains a yard or so, and it's submarine by Rob DeZima. Well, what Hand needs tonight to be successful is they need a lot of heroes out there tonight. They, they, they've got to have some guys playing over their head, and, 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 and they have guys that are capable of doing that. That play uh, was run right at uh, Tim Hevesy and Rob DeZima, and they were both in on the tackle. Seventy-four, Mike Salmani is uh, in at uh, defensive tackle on the other side. Notre Dame looking to throw long, and it's going to be way overthrown. Uh, coverage by uh, Ryan Doraz and Scott Hevesy, but uh, no chance to complete that one. Well, that'll show you that the quarterback uh, is capable of going deep on you. What that was is a play-action pass where they, they faked to their, their stud back, number 44, up the middle to try to freeze uh, uh, on the corner. Uh, and all that was was a fly pattern where number, number seven uh, uh, was just sprinting down the field. And he was open. Uh, there, there, there was double coverage on him. Uh, he was open, but the ball was just thrown too deep. And is... Stopped Notre Dame for third and long several times, and it's third and eight again. And quarterback draw up the middle, and a pretty good gain, and near a first down. He may be just short. But you know, he is short of the first down. So that, that was a great job uh, uh, by the defense to keep him from getting that first down, so Notre Dame is going to be forced to punt. Chris Doris and Tom Malik finally make the tackle, but it stopped just uh, about a foot or so short of a first down. He needs to get across the 30 to make the first down. Fourth down coming up. You know, this hand team is showing me that they're not awed by this Notre Dame team. Uh, uh, they're, they're playing good, solid football. Uh, uh, they're out here to, uh, uh, to attack, not be attacked. Uh, if they continue to play like this, uh, 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 they're going to be in this game the whole time. They have forced Notre Dame to punt several times, and they will punt again. Hamill and Lynch back to receive for hand. And it's a good kick by uh, Notre Dame, and it will be fielded uh, by Hamill down at about the 32, and he has very little place to go. Out of bounds, the flag is thrown. The flag is thrown at about the uh, 37. See, that was a nice pop by Sean Lynch to enable uh, uh, Eric Hamill to, to, to get that corner on the outside. Uh, he came in and really 
right side at uh, that defender. Good job. That may be an illegal block, however, on the return. We'll see. I think that was away from the ball, though, Ken. I don't think that was at the point of contact. Good uh, clip against Hand on the return. So uh, Hand is uh, making mistakes a little bit too much against this caliber of team. Give their offensive team a little breathing room. So far tonight, Hands' offense has not had any breathing room at all. Takes it all the way back to the 18-yard line. First down for Hands. Two receivers to the left. Now Gentile goes in motion. That was a rolling right, looking to throw, being pursued, and Lynch. Super, super pass. Pass. a nice block in the corner, uh, but then that defensive man was able to get in in, uh, in Scott's face. One of the things he hasn't been doing tonight on a spin out is setting up before he throws the ball. That time he set up, threw the ball, Sean uh, took it and broke back across the green. Great job. So all the way from the 18 to the opposite 32, a long game by Hand. And that's what Hand needs to uh, uh, to jack up this offensive unit. Norris, uh, right up the middle, uh, short yardage, about a yard. You know, one play like that can, can really get your offensive units of confidence and, and get that thing moving on them uh, and, and take away some confidence uh, away from Notre Dame. Jerry on that long pass completion. I didn't pick up who the other receiver out there was, but he made a good shield block to give uh, Lance a chance to turn it to the far sideline. Three receivers to the right this time. Have us a rolling, looking to throw. Com complete pass to McGrath. McGrath is inside the 20 to the 16. First down. Look out there in Tiger Country now, Ken. As we said at the, at the onset, uh, a couple of things a hand hit it in its favor, and one of them was playing a strong field. Peter McGrath, complete pass from uh, Scott Hevesy, another first down. And they're inside the 20 for the first time. And you know this fighting breaks you can. That's like a 12th man on the field, too, Ken. Oh, the 16. High formation. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Devastate looking to throw. He's being pursued, and now he throws it up. And incomplete pass. A little bit behind Peter McGrath. See, that's a shame, too. If Peter could have seen that ball coming a little bit earlier, made a break to the outside, uh, he was wide open because as soon as he did make his cut, which was a little, uh, a little pursuing the ball uh, thrown behind him, uh, the defender uh, 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 slipped and wasn't there. Scott Hevesy does not have a lot of time to pass, even when his protection is decent. He had to get rid of it that time, too. Second down and ten. And the problem with a passing game is if you have an incompletion, you end up with a second, ten, and a third. Hevesy is swinging to the right, and he's tackled in the backfield. Lost him a couple of yards. See, if a running play doesn't work and you have a, a, a second and eight or, or a second and seven and you get another three or four yards, that's one thing. But when you have a couple of passes in a row that doesn't work, uh, 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 then, then, then you're, you're backed up. That time there was one pass and a run, and now it's third and, and 11. And that's not the position you want to be in because your defensive line will not be looking for a run. They'll just be teeing off, making penetration into the backfield. Third down and long for Han. Hevesy looking to throw. And he's going to the right side. Complete pass to John Lynch. And that's a first down, Kent. That's a first down, first and goal on the five-yard line. That's a really mark it. It looks like he has enough from here. I don't see a signal yet that the referee uh, gives him the first down. Sean Lynch is right on the right sideline. Good pass, good and he, completion. And, and you know what was great about that, Kent, is Sean was very, very close to the sideline, kept both feet in bounds. I believe they're going to drag the sticks back across the field to measure this, but uh, from our view, it looks like he should have it. The measurement showed a first down for hand at the five-yard line, just outside the five. I'll tell you what. First uh, and goal. First to goal from the five. The one thing can't, hand cannot afford to do is not score. They have got to punch it in. 
They got a power eye this time with uh, Matt Gentile, a blocker, blocker in the backfield. Doraz, a fullback, Hamill, the tailback, and it's handed off to Doraz. Doraz gets across the five to about the four. Depends where they mark his forward progress, but it's certainly no more than a yard. It's going to be real tough to gain yardage uh, tackle to tackle against this Notre Dame team. They're big, they're rangy, uh, they're quick, they have some good linebackers. Uh, uh, what they're going to have to do is, is spread this defense out uh, to punch it in. I, I think nose on nose in a, in a, in a punching match, uh, they're going to have real difficult uh, getting it in the end zone. So gain of about a yard to the four yard line. Uh, Heversy looking to throw in the end zone. Touchdown! Three pass! Touchdown hand! Matt Gentile catches the ball in the corner of the end zone. That's quarterback to quarterback. Quarterback to quarterback. So hand is taking it right down the field on Notre Dame and scored. And Notre Dame had a two point conversion, so I assume that hand will probably go for two also. Notre Dame knows they're in a football game tonight, Kent. And they showed me a lot on this last drive. Uh, a couple of long plays, they've uh, opened it up and they've taken it right to Notre Dame. A two point conversion try coming up with uh, Notre Dame ahead eight to six at this point. Hevesy looking to throw and he's got his man. Incomplete pass, but a flag is thrown near the goal line. Let's see what that one is. And I think Matt was held in the end zone. It's a push off against the receiver for hand, so uh, it will not be a two point conversion. The score remains eight to six with 4.54 left before halftime, but hand showed us something on that drive. And, and, and also they, they showed themselves something. They showed themselves that this Notre Dame team is not invincible. Uh, hand ha is capable of moving the ball on them. Hand is capable of stopping them. Uh, right now the score is eight to six. Uh, there's really no difference between these two teams so far, Ken, except for the mistakes that have allowed Notre Dame to be able to gain some yardage. That's right, and uh, Daniel Hand is within two points of Notre Dame and has made a lot more mistakes than Notre Dame has. So if they can... Uh, uh, maintain this uh, type of concentration, uh, they may do well the rest of this game. Has the ball teed up on the far hash mark. Notre Dame has two receivers between the 10 and the 15. And it's a low kick. It'll bounce and be picked up at about the 21. And a return to the right side and a long return. One man to beat and that's Lynch. And Lynch uh, slows him up. Matt Gentile makes a tackle, but all the way to the 31. Long return by Notre Dame. And that really takes the wind out of your sails from that uh, a drive. Uh, and that was a long drive, Kent, because I believe they started on their own 18-yard line. 18, that's right. Um, uh, and, and for that kicking, t uh, kicking team to, uh, uh, to be able to uh, 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 run all the way down to the 30-yard line, it really gives Notre Dame uh, tremendous field position. That's not, what you wanna ha that's not what, how you want to have your, your touchdown answered. Notre Dame, an excellent field position. Pitch this time to the right, the sweep right, and Hand has some men over there, and an excellent defensive play. Chris Norris makes a tackle. Uh, near the line of scrimmage, gained uh, about a yard. Well, I'll tell you, they've had some breakdowns. That time they had a breakdown in, in kick coverage. They have some breakdowns uh, uh, in mistakes that have given Notre Dame uh, tremendous field uh, advantage. But the defense is real tough. They're playing real solid ball. They're staying low up front, and the linebackers are really doing a tremendous job uh, uh, inside and outside. Tom Malik and Chris Dorez are the inside linebackers. Uh, Udicek and uh, Jen Tyler on the outside. Power eye formation by Notre Dame. Pitch to the right, and a flag is thrown in Notre Dame's backfield. That one will come back. Uh, it's caught in the end zone by Notre Dame, but I don't believe that one's going to count. No, there was, a, there was a penalty, and it'll be a procedure call against Notre Dame. And the only reason the ball was caught was because it was ticked. So that uh, will be a penalty against Notre Dame. Uh, they did get the completion, a tip ball by the defensive man, and caught in the end zone by Notre Dame. So there's a bit of a break on that play. That's going to back up Notre Dame. It's going to take him out of that good field position. And what, what Han has got to do is not let him off the hook now. It's an 
illegal motion penalty against Notre Dame. We'll repeat second down at the 35, but no touchdown on it. Notre Dame takes a timeout before they get this next play going with 340 left before halftime. And the score is Notre Dame 8, Daniel Han 6. Notre Dame uh, taking a timeout. It'll bring up second down and 14. Called about the 35. They're looking to throw and being pressured. And they're setting up a screen, incomplete pass, and pretty good coverage all around by hand. Utech and Clark were in the middle of the screen, and Rob Dezima was pressuring the quarterback. And, and that's the way you set up a screen. Uh, uh, the, the, the linemen allow the, the defenders to come in, and it looks like the defenders are making great penetration. They're going to sack the quarterback, and just before they get there, uh, the, uh, the quarterback throws, dumps the ball off to the, uh, 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 the running back, and he has a wall of linemen uh, in front of the running back to the side. That time, uh, 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 the pressure was just a little too much, and he wasn't able to make a, a good throw. Hands defense has forced Notre Dame into another third and long. Quarterback straight back, looking to throw. Got good protection, and he's throwing to the right side. It's a complete pass near the sideline, and now he's being stopped. Peter Lawler makes a tackle, helped by Udicek. That'll be short of a first down at about the 25, but uh, they're far enough down to go for it on fourth. Fourth and four. What they did that time, Ken, is they sent some uh, receivers deep to clear out the zone uh, and threw to the short man in the seam, uh, meaning in between the, the linebackers and, and the secondary, so he was wide open. Fourth down and uh, a long four to go for first down. The ball is just across the 25. That's the second timeout by Notre Dame in the first half. Play for Notre Dame uh, with 3.02 left before halftime. They've got a power high, but so far they have not been successful on the ground, Ken. Man in motion to the right. And they're looking to throw to the right, and he's got a man open over there. Complete pass, first down for Notre Dame. About to 17. He almost took out the cameraman, too. There's a cameraman there on the sidelines. He's not one of ours, though. <laughs> that was a first down for Notre Dame, so we're inside of three minutes left before halftime, but Notre Dame is in good position. Hand cannot afford to give up another touchdown uh, just before the half. They've, they've really got to do a tremendous job of defense here on the 15-yard line. All right, again, their big man in the, in the tailback position, now in motion. And it's handed off to the tailback and uh, goes forward to about the 10. So a pretty good gain on first down. See, what they do, Ken, is they put that tailback in motion, and what that does is it forces the linebacker outside, and they run towards that vacated linebacker position off tackle. Almost eight-yard gain just inside the 10-yard line for Notre Dame. Second and a long two. And Notre Dame, uh, tight formation, power eye backfield, strong running formation. And they hand it off to their tailback, and he's heading for the right sideline. Touchdown, Notre Dame. So far tonight, if Hannah has had some weakness uh, on the run, it's, it's been outside. Uh, uh, they've been able to stuff it, tackle to tackle, uh, but uh, they've been able to, at times, get that uh, corner off tackle. About a seven yard run, and Notre Dame scores for their second touchdown with 2.15 left in the half. And their big man uh, is a little hard to bring down one on one. Conversion try coming up, and it looks like Notre Dame is lined up to go for two again. This would be sweet to stop this now, Kent. Motion, same play they had before, and it's going to be a pass in the right sideline, and complete pass. Two-point conversion is good, right in the right sideline of the uh, end zone. Very good pass play. So the score is now 16-6, to six. Notre Dame leading hand. Time to kick off back to hand, Eric Hamill on the far side, Sean Lynch on the near side. And it's a low bouncer this time uh, and rolling down toward Lynch who uh, bobbles it, picks it up at about the 15 and we'll get back to the 20. 
Daniel Hand gets the ball back at about the 20 with two minutes left before halftime. Scott Hevesy all the way so far at uh, quarterback. Chris Doraz at fullback, Eric Hamill at tailback, Lynch and Gentile split wide each side, looking to throw, and it's aimed for Lynch, and Lynch makes the catch. Lynch, complete pass with two men covering him across the 50. You know, Scott Hennessy had a nice touch on the ball. He had defenders in his face, and uh, Sean Lynch uh, was double covered with two receivers, had tremendous, uh, tremendous con uh, concentration. The ball was well thrown. Uh, a great, great job. So that gets a uh, hand out of uh, the deep hole down to the 47 yard line with a little over a minute and a half left before halftime. Hevesy looking to throw and rolling left, throwing left, and complete pass to Peter McGrath and out of bounds at the 30. That was a super job by Chris Doraz uh, uh, making the block on, on the corner, allowing Scott Hevesy the time to throw the ball. And the nice thing about it was that he went out of bounds and it stops the clock. Stops the clock with a minute and a half left, and they're in Notre Dame territory on the 30 yard line, Kent. Scott Hevesy laid that ball right over Peter McGrath's shoulder uh, for about a 16 yard gain and a first down at the 31. And with uh, three receivers to the right, lined up in an eye to the right, and Hevesy looking to throw the right complete to Eric Hamill across the middle to about the 22, eight or nine yards. Now that's one of the surprises I was waiting to see tonight. What that is is a stack, uh, where they're stacking three men, one receiver goes to the right, another receiver goes to the left, and the other receiver goes right in the middle, and it's a very, very difficult thing to cover because you don't know what that's going on. About a nine-yard gain, second and one for uh, Daniel Hand, and Hand burns their first time out of the half with 119 showing on the clock. An, almost a nine-yard gain for a Hand on a stacked uh, receivers, and they're doing it again. Three men to the right for Hand. Hevesy looking to throw, and he's throwing back, aiming for Hamill near the end zone. Uh, it's intercepted by Notre Dame, and finally tackled at about the six by Gentile. He was aiming for Hamill in the end zone, but it was picked off in the end zone and brought back to about the six. Oh, that's a shame, Kent, because Hand was really on the move. I might add, Scott Hevesy coming into this game, uh, again, uh, thank you to... Uh, 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 Cat stats for some stats. Coming into the game, uh, Scott was back to pass 44 times, completed 29 uh, for 423 yards, 66% uh, 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 average uh, 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 yards per attempt, 9.6. So, so uh, Scott has had a uh, real hot hand, and he's been hot tonight, Cat. We're inside of a minute left in the first half, and uh, Notre Dame takes over the ball between the seven and the eight. And they will run it right up the middle, and their uh, good runner makes a good gain of about 12 yards across the 20 to the 21. Well, Notre Dame will be content to uh, uh, to run power football at you, tackle and tackle, uh, and and uh, uh, nurse their their 16 to 6 lead. To what they've seen is is his hand is capable of, of exploding on him, and they don't want to give hand another opportunity uh, uh, to get the ball back and put some points on the board. So we're down to 30 seconds left in the half. Notre Dame has one man split to the right, and they're just going to hand it off and run it up the middle. Gain a yard or two, tackled by uh, Malik and Udicek, and the clock continues to run down to 15. And that should be the last play of the half. We're down to five seconds, and the clock is rolling, so that should be the last play. The first half runs out with a score 16 to 6 in favor of Notre Dame of uh, West Haven, but uh, Jerry uh, Hand has played with them. Yeah, they really have. Hand has nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, this score should be a tight ball game right now. Uh, the difference in the game uh, has been uh, some, some of the uh, breakdowns and mistakes that, that have, have uh, allowed Notre Dame to get out of, out of trouble. But defensively, uh, uh, Han has played real tough, and offensively, uh, Han has been able to move the ball, not, not really on the ground, but in the air. It doesn't matter how you move it, just as long as you move it. Uh, uh, they, they should not be ashamed of themselves, and they should come out of this locker room at halftime uh, uh, fired up because they, they've seen that this Notre Dame uh, is vulnerable. But one of the keys uh, in the second half uh, is going to be whether or not Han uh, can not only stay healthy, uh, but whether or not uh, uh, they, they can keep from getting tired. 
We will have uh, some of the band activities um, uh, at halftime, and then we will be back with the second half uh, following that. Oh, I'm I'm in. <laughs>
number is 18 We're waiting for the second half of this game to get underway, and uh, Frank Tordoff has been good enough to uh, keep a few statistics in the first uh, half. Uh, Frank, is this an even game, or...? Or are we getting blown out? No, let me tell you very much here, Ken. Han has uh, an awful lot to be proud of themselves. The statistics are relatively close, uh, and, and we can see that from this. Let me go through those a little bit. Notre Dame has run 30 plays so far. Han has run 25. So that's a pretty close net right there. Of the 30 in Notre Dame, nine have been passed with five completions. They've had 21 rushes. Now, the rushes have netted them, them uh, 71 yards. Passing yards of 29 for a net of, I mean, a total of 100 out there. Okay, their production has come from this, the Tarek Sala, their, their big gun out there, has rushed 12 times for 50 yards for a four-yard average. Uh, their other back, Cotton, has uh, 13 yards, and then they've got another miscellaneous eight out there, if you will. On the passing side, they've got their big guy, Ionetti, out there, has got 25 yards on four catches, and Sala himself has one out there for seven. So uh, that's their numbers. The hand numbers, 25 plays of that, 13 of passes. And Scotty has been out there with nine completions with only one interception so far. Hands run 10 times for a total of eight yards. We know they've been shut down. But the passing yardage is stunning, 150 yards. 150 so, in the first half. 150 in the first half. It's absolutely marvelous. Uh, passing yards go to McGrath with three carries, three catches for 37. Hamill. Uh, one, ca one catch for eight, Gentile one for five, and Lynch, the big one, four for an even 100 yards out there. However, the big number as we get going here is Hand has had five penalties for 45 yards. Okay, there you have it. Notre Dame kicks off to Hand and is fielded by uh, Lynch at about the 12 yard line, a center return back near the 30, where Hand will take the play, uh, take the ball for the first possession of the second half. Well, those are good stats, Kent, and as we said at the onset, uh, Han didn't feel that they were going to be able to move the ball offensively on the ground. They felt they were going to have to do it in the air, and that's what they've been doing. Uh, I think the game plan is going to be a bit of the, of the same of the second quarter coming into this third quarter. Thank you, Frank. We appreciate your uh, keeping the uh, stats for us the uh, first half. Uh, and hand comes right out looking to throw, and a man open here, uh, Sean Lynch, uh, about a five, six yard gain, complete pass. So hand uh, obviously knows that they're running against a very tough defensive uh, football team, and they've opened this game up. But you know, if they, if they can keep this passing game going to the outside, they, they're going to be able to start uh, uh, spreading that defensive out, and they're going to be able to pop Doraz up the middle a few times. About a seven yard gain, complete pass to uh, Sean Lynch. Uh, but to the left this time are both Lawler and Lynch and they're hands off to uh, Hamill in the uh, tailback position, gains about two. That'll bring up fourth, or third down and short. And that's what Ham wants to see tonight, Kent. What they want to see is second and five, third and two, third and one. Uh, that's their game plan. To do, to do it in the air, spread that defensive out, uh, de uh, defense out, and then see if they can punch a couple of uh, off tackle. We're just short of the 40-yard line. They need about two feet for a first down. And headed off to Torres, and Torres is about right at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he made it, Ken. That looks like he short. was stopped. the ball just across the 40-yard line and they'll bring in the chains to measure this but from our angle he may be a few inches short first down so hand with a tight formation tim Havis in center uh, drennan and azima are the two guards scott Havis a quarterback Hand off to Doraz, and Doraz burrows his way under, and that's going to be very close. Depends where they mark it, Kent, but I think he had enough uh, forward progress for the first down. Where the referee's yeah. got his foot, that should be a They're first. marking it. First down. First down for him, but not much. Yeah, I remember what Vincent Barney used to say, it's a game of inches. I think they had it by one or two that time. They were short by about three or four, and they, uh, they made it by about three or four. So first down hand. 41. 
Pitch this time to Hamill, swinging to the right. Cuts inside, gains a yard or so. What that was was a toss right, and they did a good job of kicking out uh, 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 that linebacker, number 44, who's also their big stud fullback. Uh, uh, kicked him outside, and, and Eric broke inside. Uh, uh, they had a linebacker that came up into the hole, scraped into the hole real fast that made the hit on him. But it was nice blocking on the corner and gets number 44. A gain of close to two yards. Second and uh, about eight. Lynch split wide to the left. Gentile motion to the left. And uh, Hevesy has to get rid of it. Complete pass. First down. John Lynch got to the ball down near the 45. There was great blocking at the point of attack. It was a spin out left, and they had both uh, uh, both running backs uh, sealing off uh, that corner. Uh, but Sal at number 44, Kent, uh, was coming an awful fast from the backside. Scott got it away just in time. Good job of releasing the ball, and he did. So Scott Hevesy is playing an excellent game at quarterback, and he is being pressured. Three receivers to the right for hand. And Hevesy is looking across the middle, complete pass to Peter McGrath down to the 36. And that looks like it's close to another first down. He uh, is very close to another first down. That may even be close enough for a measurement. I see no signal yet. They mark it just short. Uh, maybe a foot chart of a first down at about the 36. About an, over a nine yard gain, complete pass from uh, Scott Hevesy to Peter McGrath. And Hevesy is getting more yardage passing. They're not able to run much, but uh, this time uh, Doraz carries the ball. He didn't need much, and it looks like he may have that foot. No signal from the referees yet, and they're going to measure it, it looks like. Chris Dora has slipped as he uh, took the hand off that time, and he wasn't able to uh, drive forward very much, but he did gain just a little bit. Yeah, that was designed to be a real quick hitter uh, 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 to left of center, and he did slip, and he, and he punched it back over to the right-hand side, but I still think he has enough for the first down. Tonight, uh, uh, they have used up all the parking space at Strong Field, and uh, People are parking clear back to the uh, country club. You know, there's just as many people here tonight as there is on Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's right. Excellent crowd tonight and a good night. It's about 40 degrees, no wind. Evansy looking to throw over on the right side. Complete pass. John Lynch and out of bounds. Inside the 20 and about the 17. You know, Sean is doing a great job on the side, finding that open seam, and he's just standing there waiting for the ball. And Hevesy has got a real hot arm tight. He is right on the money. Sean that time, great concentration on the ball. And what he did good was, after he caught the ball, he picked up another three, four yards. If Hand can uh, take it in and score this time, uh, they're back in this ball game. One set back is uh, Hamill this time. Hevesy looking to throw, he's being pressured. It's a knock in the air, complete pass. McGrath catches it, takes it down to the other one, and it's into the end zone. Touchdown, and touchdown. Into the end zone, covered by hand. Woo! That looked like uh, Sean Lynch uh, covered the ball in the end zone. You know, Grant was the intended receiver. There, there's no grass growing up under anybody's feet uh, on the hand team tonight. Great concentration by Doraz. Tipped up a couple of times, a second effort, brought him down to the one yard line, he fumbled the ball, and the hand defenders are not standing around. Uh, they're right there, they picked up the ball in the end zone. Great, great heads up play by that whole uh, uh, offensive team of hand. And John Lynch made a real hustle play to get that ball in the end zone and score for hand. Bring the score to 16 to 12, two point uh, conversion try coming up. Hevesy looking to throw and going to the right side, complete in the end zone. Two point conversion, good. Sean Lance catches the ball. You know, the only difference in the score right now is the one missed conversion attempt by hand. Otherwise, it'll be tight score. 8 0 1 left in the third quarter, and Daniel Hand is back in this ball game. Two point game. Okay, I, I don't think Notre Dame is used to being in the third quarter. Ahead only by two points. <laughs> this, this is a little different for Notre Dame tonight. They, they, they realize now they're, they're in for a ball game. Sean Lynch uh, left the kickoff. Sean Lynch is having a super game. Frank Cardoff just told us that that's eight catches for John. Long kick fielded at about the 12. Uh, 
by Notre Dame. Return up the middle. And a good return. The man's got an opening. Finally cut down. Chris Dora seals it. Return almost to the 39. Well, the one thing Hand cannot afford to do is, is, is allow these guys uh, 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 some running room and, and allow mistakes to enable Notre Dame to be able to pick up some yardage. Uh, they've got to play mistake-free mistake football and, and do what they've been doing, uh, moving the ball in the air. Notre Dame uh, now knows that they're in a ball game. Hand off to the first man through and a good game. Double, double. Ball is loose and covered by Hand. Covered by Scott Hennessy. the ball loose. Daniel Hand with the ball back at the 47. I'll tell you, you take a look on the field right now, you'll see Notre Dame hanging their head. Their hand is sky high. Hevesy looking to throw. He's being pressured again and complete pass. And that's uh, to Peter Lawler on the sideline and about an eight-yard game. Seven-yard game. and it's all on hand side. But what they've got to do is not make mistakes because that'll, totally, that'll take that momentum away. Andy Drennan and Rob DeZemer, the two guards on each side of Tim Hevesy. Scott Hevesy looking to throw again. Lost it up in the air and it's knocked down. Almost, almost intercepted. Almost intercepted. Uh, Matt Gentile was the intended receiver. And, and Scott Hevesy really didn't have time to set up. He was back on his heels because of that tremendous rush, that tremendous penetration by the Notre Dame defense. He was rocked back on his heels and he had to release the ball. And, uh, and Matt Gentile was not open. That'll bring up third down and three. spread them out in the passing game and then allow Chris Doris to punch a couple up the middle. That's about the first carry of the door has made more than two or three yards. First down for Hand right at the 25. You know, he almost popped it big to the outside too, Ken. Scott Hevis, the quarterback, pitched this time to Eric Hamill and he's swinging to the right and tries to cut back and nothing there. May have lost a yard. I tell you, this is one of the most exciting high school football games that I've ever seen. Well, we got two top, te top ten teams in the state, uh, although Notre Dame is really a number one and everybody else is behind them. And the thing that's so good about Hand is they're playing with a lot of their weapons. A lot of Hand's weapons are on the sidelines, and they've got a lot of young people and a lot of inexperienced people at different positions doing the job. Joel Donnelly is in there, even though he, uh, you say he had a broken toe? Yeah, he's got a fractured toe. He's in the game at left tackle. And a flag is thrown before this play gets going. Well, that's too bad, too, because that was a design sprint out play. Uh, uh, with the sprint out series working and the pass working, they were looking for run. Uh, nice design spin out play, and, and Scott was going to be able to break it. It's an encroachment penalty against Notre Dame, so Hand uh, uh, gets the penalty. Well, that shows you what's happening. Hand is, is, uh, is doing some things to Notre Dame that Notre Dame isn't used to, and now Notre Dame's getting a little flustered, and, and they're starting to make the mistakes. Second and uh, close to six. Gentile motion left and hand it up to Eric Hamill. Hamill's got an opening. Hamill cuts back, goes to the 10 yard line. Woo! First down for Hand. Baby, oh baby, oh baby. What a great job by Eric Hamill. Uh, he has 
has tremendous vision, as we've talked about in the past. Uh, he, he, he follows his blocking very well, looks for the open seam, and he seems to be able to have acceleration to be able to hit that seam. That was, uh, that was senior Joel Donnelly over on that corner that was wiped out the corner to allow Hamill some room to run. First down, and uh, plunge right up the middle by Chris Dorez, gains a yard, yard and a half. You know, one thing that uh, no team in the state has been able to consistently do against Notre Dame uh, is have some consistency to their offense and, and have some control to the offense. And Han is doing a great job of being able to control the ball so far. It's second down and goal at the nine yard line. McGrath, foot wide to the right, Gentile slot right, and Hevesy looking to throw, and he's got a match. Touchdown! Lead pass, beat McGrath! Touchdown throw from Scott Hevesy to Peter McGrath in the end zone. Ken, I don't believe that Notre Dame has been behind so far this year in the second half. This is the first time that Notre Dame has been behind, I believe, in the second half of the game. Daniel Hand takes the first lead they've had in this game. That was a spin out right. There was good blocking in the corner by uh, 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 Hamill and Dorez. Uh, giving, uh, uh, giving Scott Hennessy enough time to throw the ball. Super, super job. With a four point lead, Daniel Hand takes his first uh, timeout of the second half before they try the conversion. Gary, after uh, Hand finally takes the lead here, what do we do on a conversion try? It looks like a two point try. Right now, they're ahead by four. They'd like to be ahead by six. Lynch is put by the right, and Hevesy back, looking across the middle. Complete pass! Two-point uh, conversion is good. That's uh, Gentile, not Gentile. I tell you, that really rubs some salt in, in the wound. Our uh, hand is just punching it right down their throat, and Notre Dame is not used to this. And what Notre Dame is going to do is it's going to force them out of their game plan. It's going to force them to do the things that they don't like to do. And what Hand can do in that case is capitalize on it. So Daniel Hand takes the lead, 22 to 16, 422 left in the third quarter, and Notre Dame knows their ball game at this point. <laughs> Daniel Hand with a great drive that time with a couple of runs mixed in, Jerry. They're mixing it up now. Hey, you know what? Uh, Either hand doesn't read the papers or they don't believe the papers because they're a 20 point underdog and right now they're up by six. Sean Lynch to kick it off back to Notre Dame. Hits it high this time. High and at about the 18 yard line and a return to the right side. And a good return. And one man back is Lynch and Lynch gets his man. But an excellent return by Notre Dame. Lynch playing safety after kicking off. And he was the only man between the Return man in the goal line. Hand is having trouble on their kickoff team uh, uh, staying in their lanes, and number seven has been able to break them to midfield just about every time he's had the ball. Okay? And that gives Notre Dame tremendous field position at the 40-yard line of Hand. So almost to the 40-yard line, we're down to four minutes left, third quarter, and Notre Dame finds themselves behind, but they're in good position. Run right up the middle, and not much there, maybe a yard. Peter Clark in on that play, and also number was, 74, uh, Mike Salmani. It was actually, yeah, you're right, but it was Rob Dezima that made the play work because Rob was able to uh, get in the backfield and get the initial hit on 44 that slowed him up. About a one-yard gain. man for Notre Dame, pitched to the left this time, and a man has got a corner, finally dragged down by Peter Clark, but a good gain near first down. Yeah, so far, if his defense has, has had uh, any susceptibility to, uh, uh, to breakdowns, it's been on the corner. Uh, Notre Dame has been able to, uh, uh, to get the corner tonight. They're close enough, it looks like the measure. The measurement gives uh, Notre Dame a first down just outside the 30. I see Mike Anderson is in the game, Jerry. We haven't seen him too much tonight. 
You said he wouldn't play much. That's right. Mike Anderson and Rob Dezina are the two down men in the middle, flanked on the outside by Denae and Park. And a run right up the middle this time and uh, falls forward, but uh, Hand has a lot of defensive men there. Peter Clark on the bottom of that tackle and Rob Dezima on the top of it. Also, the two line by inside linebackers, Malik and Dorez. Well, so far, they've done a great job tackle tackle. What they've got to do is watch watch the end, and they've got to be able to get some penetration uh, uh, and uh, put some pressure on the quarterback. The two corners are played by Gentile and Udicek. And up this time, right up the middle, tackled by Rob Dezima. Not much there, maybe a yard. And what that was, it was a counter play where they got flow going to the right side of the offensive line and come back to the left, and Rob is right there to make the hit. Evesey and Holt back in the game. Third down and five for Notre Dame, just outside the 25. Two receivers to the right for Notre Dame, and quarterback looking to throw to one of them. And he's open he's long into the end zone and caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. You know, he was open and Matt was able to make the break on him at the last minute and took a swipe at the ball. Uh, I think he even hit the ball, but number five was able to hold on to it. So Notre Dame comes back and scores and regains the, well, they don't regain the lead. It's tied at this point with a conversion try coming. Big, big play, obviously, Kent. What, what Hand can do is regain that momentum by not allowing Notre Dame to, to get ahead. We're down to 142 left in the third quarter. Notre Dame will try to kick to take a one-point lead. Hand is looking to block it, and it's fumbled in the backfield, and Hand is chasing the quarterback. It's lofted up, no good, remains tied. And that was not a planned play, Kent. It was a poor stamp. Uh, it, was, it wasn't a planned conversion play. And, and that's what Hand needed to get back some momentum. It's tie score, and Hand's back, uh, uh, back at the helm. This is about as exciting as I've uh, seen the game at uh, Strong Field in a long time. And the crowd is into it tonight, a big crowd. It sure is, and the difference, the difference is going to be uh, uh, the fourth quarter. Uh, can Hand sustain the emotion that they have right now into the fourth quarter? One thing that Hand has done so far all year is they've been able to outscore their opponents in the fourth quarter, and, and that has a lot to do with, with their physically being in tremendous shape. Notre Dame is set to kick off back to uh, Lynch and Hamill standing near the 10. It's a bouncer, and uh, it's uh, fielded by hand near the 30. Matt Gentile got a hand on it, but he uh, was not able to get it. Looked like uh, Tim Havasi and Chris Dorez were both there to cover the ball, but pretty good position. Uh, ball at the 29. We got a minute and a half left in the third quarter. Tie score, 22 to 22. And it's a draw play this time to Hamill, and he gets right back to the line of scrimmage. Not much there. What they're trying to do that time, Kent, was uh, because Hand's attack has been all pass, uh, the defensive line will just tee off and they'll disregard the run, and what they'll do is they'll run right by the runner. So that's when the draw works, is, is when they're uh, looking for a pass, the defensive line's getting penetration. We're down to a minute in the third quarter. Hevesy rolling to the left, being pursued, now he throws it, complete pass to uh, Gentile. Gentile just short of a first down, about a yard short. about the 38, he needs a yard for first down. We're down to near a half a minute. You know, Scott Hevesy is releasing the ball just before he's hit on just about every play. And needs uh, one yard to get a first down. Notre Dame with a lot of men up front and hand it 
up to Torres. Got the first down across the 45. Gained about six yards. And that should be the last play of the third quarter. We're down to 10 seconds and counting. With the third quarter running out to score 22 to 22. Daniel Hamm with the ball at the, about the 46. Fourth quarter tie ball game with the number one ranked team in the state. Daniel Hamm with the ball. Hevesy rolling right, throwing, complete pass. Gain about eight or nine yards, and that's uh, Sean Lynch who makes his ninth reception of the night. You know, one, one cliche in, in football, Ken, is fatigue makes cowards of us all. We're in the fourth quarter, hands so far over the course of the year, has outscored their opponents in the fourth quarter, 49 to 36. This is gonna be the real key. Uh, uh, the team that gets fatigued in the fourth quarter is the team that's gonna start making mistakes. Right now, hand is still sky high. About an eight yard gain, uh, complete pass from uh, Hevesy to Lynch. And hand off this time to Chris Doraz, who uh, gains maybe a foot. Not much place to run in the middle of the line against Notre Dame. They're large and they're good. This is a big play, Kent. Uh, uh, third down and about uh, uh, about one and a half to two yards. And th they're, they're in territory where if they don't make this, uh, they may have to punt the ball. And sends Lynch and Gentile to the right. And <coughs> Hevesy looking to throw. It's intercepted by Notre Dame at the 40. Intended for a tight end, Mike Richards. That's a big, big break for Notre Dame because Hand's offense again was moving the ball and uh, that, that just turns things right around for Notre Dame. Hand's defense has got to suck it up. It's fourth quarter, they've got to suck it up and they've got to stop Notre Dame. Hevesy looking for a tight end Mike Richards across the middle is intercepted. We're down to ten and a half minutes left in this ball game and it's tied. Run right uh, over the left guard, left tackle, and gain three or four yards. You to check in on the uh, tackle. Into the game comes Mike Anderson. And out comes Mike Salmani. Second down and six. Ten minutes left. And they're handing off to the same guy every time almost. And he breaks the tackle. And heading for the end zone. The only man down there is uh, Peter Lawler. And he's knocked off his feet. Touchdown Notre Dame. And Steve Phillip then is going to throw a flag on, uh, the referee's going to throw a flag on Steve Phillip. Then. What, what Steve was looking for, Ken, was he, he felt that uh, Lawler was clipped. It did look like a block from behind, but uh, uh, they're not going to rule it that way. Notre Dame regains the lead. You know, the coaching staff gets, gets into this game just as much as the players. Uh, they're, they're playing over their heads. Uh, it's a tie game. Uh, the big back uh, break, breaks, breaks a big one for a touchdown, and uh, uh, it, looked like, it looked like it was a clip, and, and that's what Steve Philippon was, was complaining to the ref about. Peter Lawler was the only man back there, and he was knocked off his feet from behind. Uh, conversion try coming up. Notre Dame is taking the lead 28 to 22. Point conversion try coming up again. Power eye formation for uh, Notre Dame. One man split wide to the right, and it's a pitch to the right and dropped, and now complete and knocked down. They do not get the conversion. And that's a big, 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 big play for, for Hean because that puts Notre Dame only up by six points. All Hean has to do is score, and they, and they tie the game and punch it in and go ahead. So a six point lead for Notre Dame and there will be a penalty assessed on the kickoff. 
Well, I guess we have a partisan crowd here tonight, Ken. They're not, they're not very happy with these referees because what they're going to do right now is step off the penalty against, against Steve Philippone. Jerry, what we've got here is that uh, the flag was thrown, a penalty marker, but they have not marched They're up right, the penalty, so maybe it's declined. They may march it off uh, uh, where he endows the ball. It's kicked off this time and will bounce and picked up uh, and fumbled and finally covered uh, inside the 15 back there by Sean Lynch. And deep in their own territory at about the uh, 13. Well, their the, uh, uh, other scoring drive, Kent, they started the ball on their own 18. <laughs> so, and it showed Notre Dame that they're capable of going the distance. Notre Dame with a six point lead, and Hand is hanging tough. Hevesy looking to throw to the near side. Complete pass to Gentile. Gentile heading for the sideline. A long gain up over the 30. About a 16, 17 yard gain. Scott Hevesy to Matt Gentile. And again, Kent, uh, Scott had enough time on the spin out uh, because of the good blocking of Chris Torres and Hamill, and he's, he's setting up now. Early on in the game, he wasn't setting up. He's setting up before he throws the ball. Ball spotted between the 32 and the 33. First down for him. Lynch and Gentiles put to the right. Hevesy looking to throw, and it's thrown to Gentile, incomplete, in and out of one hand. That time, Scott had to release the ball between, before the receivers were able to make their breaks. Uh, as soon as as soon as Matt turned around, the ball was right in his face, uh, but because he's such an athlete, he, he was almost able to make that adjustment and catch the ball. about the 34. This is a big third play, uh, uh, third down play, Ken. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest plays in the game so far. With, with eight minutes to go, down by six points, they have got to get this first down. So they'll bring up third down and about 11. Or no, excuse me, third and about nine. And Daniel Hand will take a timeout to uh, talk this one over before they run it. As you said, Jerry, big play coming up. Third down and nine for Hand. Got trips to the right, Kent. Evans, the rolling right, looking to throw across the middle, rolling long, and the is there. Incomplete pass. Two or three defenders around McGrath. He did get a hand on it. That'll be a fourth and long for a hand. Well, now the defense is just going to have to do their job and get the ball back, Kent. Lynch goes back in punt formation with 8-11 joining on the clock. And Notre Dame now six points ahead. Good snap, and Lynch gets it out of there. And it's going to be fielded about the 32. Man swings to the left, but uh, he should be surrounded. Uh, he does turn the corner and out of bounds on the far sideline. Ball brought back uh, across the 40 to about the 43. Again, if I'm not mistaken, the last two times that Notre Dame has touched the ball, they've scored. What Hans got to do defensively is, is they've got to stop the Notre Dame offense. Notre Dame with the ball back and eight minutes left to play, and Notre Dame is leading by six. Play. Their big tailback is uh, takes it right up the middle, gains about three. 
Goes to four yard game. I believe we're going to see that same play over and over, Jerry, until our hands shows that they can stop it. Well, this is what Notre Dame likes to do. They like to run the ball right down your throat. They like to run a tackle to tackle, but hands so far hasn't been able to stop it. And their big buck uh, carries the ball again. He's got a first down and a good gain, almost to the 40. And he's chewing up some yardage. He's, uh, he's big, and uh, he runs well with the ball. And you know, your better backs can't uh, uh, pick up steam the more times they carry the ball. Ball at about the 41, and we're down uh, seven minutes left in the ball game. Notre Dame is starting to move it again. Most of Hans players have played the whole game both ways, so uh, we may have some kids getting a little tired. And the man hitting the backfield, but he's still moving forward. Finally, he gains a couple of yards, tackled by Chris Holt. I believe that was Malik that uh, made contact in the backfield, but he still gained some, gained four yards. Well, he's a big, rangy back. Uh, uh, he's got some good balance, and he's, he's very tough to bring down because he's very, very strong. Hands defense is uh, trying to stop this running game of Notre Dame with the clock rolling. And hand it off to the tailback this time, up the middle. Gain of about two or three. Malik can hold in on the tackle. That time, Kent uh, Hand was running an eight man front. Uh, uh, they brought Matt Gentile up uh, real close. Uh, Malik was close. Everybody was up up close trying to stop the run because what they want to do is they want to force Notre Dame to go to the air. Third down and three. And Notre Dame has steamrolled everybody they've played all year long by doing this. Split backfield this time for Notre Dame and hand off to their tailback. He's hit, bounces outside, and he's near a first down near the 30. I think his second effort did pick up a first down. It was a great job by the defense pursuing, making the hits, holding on to uh, uh, their tackle. Uh, but he's big and ranging. He was able to pull over for the first down. First down, Notre Dame at the 30. And what they're doing, Ken, is they're controlling the ball, they're keeping it on the ground, and they're running time off the clock. And they're keeping it away from hand. High formation, uh, Salah, their big back, is now the tailback on this one. And he gets the ball going to the left, across behind tackle, and uh, he is awfully hard to stop. Gains five, six yards. Gain almost six yards uh, to the 24. You know, it's under five minutes now. Han has got to make something happen, happen defensively. They've got to get some penetration uh, and get the ball back. They, 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 they've got to uh, uh, go for the ball and, and, and make something happen. Peter Clark and Derek Denae are both in the defensive line for Han. And off to the tailback again over left tackle. And gains a yard or two. Mike Anderson in on the tackle. And this is going to bring up a third and short, Ken. I think he's a he's about a, a two-yard shot. Yudicek was underneath of that play. But third, down, third down and close to three. But don't forget, this is two down territory for Notre Dame, so they're going to have two shots if they don't get it on this ensuing play. They're down to the 23. playing grinded out football with a six point lead. And the pitch is There it is, there it is. There's the mistake. Ball of the three and two men go after it. I believe uh, Notre Dame got it. Notre Dame man uh, fell on it right ahead of uh, Genta, or uh, Hevesy. Hevesy was, uh, Scott Hevesy was going for all he could do to get that ball. But the ball's clear back to the 43. You know, 44 showed some good speed to get back there, recover the ball. 
but that was the mistake that Hand needed uh, to get the ball back. But it's going to it's going to force Notre Dame into uh, punting the ball. Except that Hand's going to be backed up. It would have been a lot nicer to have the ball on the 40, uh, uh, 42 yard line than to have it back uh, deep in their own end zone. Notre Dame in punt formation after that uh, mishandled uh, pitch. Lynch and Hamill back to receive the punt. It's a good snap. He gets it out of there. King is toward uh, Lynch. Lynch catches it at the 10 yard line. Got a wall on this side and Lynch gets by. One man, two men, out of bounds across the 20. You know, Hand was able to set up the wall. The flag is thrown after the play is over. Hand was able to set up the wall and get some nice blocking on the corner. Uh, and Lynch did some nice fancy running up the, uh, right up the sideline. I'm not sure what that flag was, Jerry, but it was thrown well after the tackle was made. I think it was a late hit out of bounds, Kent. No, well, we have no signal yet, but it looks like the referee's going to march it off against Notre Dame. And that'll be a 15-yard penalty, Kent. Big, big penalty, because that'll bring the ball back almost to where they would have recovered it. Balls at the 37, and we can, we're down to uh, 2 minutes 36 seconds on the clock, and Daniel Hand, this may be the last time they see the ball. They need to take it down and put it in the end zone. This is the drive. This is the drive where they've got to score. They know it, and, and they're, they're up to the challenge. They've been up to the challenge all night long. Nevis has got three receivers flooded to the right. We've got that stack formation. And Doris blocks. He's open. And a man down there, a uh, ball is almost caught by Matt Gentile. Incomplete pass. So. You know, Scott Hamill made a break of, uh, uh, with that stack. They had one receiver go to the right, another receiver go to the left. Scott Hamill was stacked behind them. We're on a fly right down the middle, and he was wide open, deep cat. But again, uh, Hevesy had a man hanging on his jersey just before he threw that ball. Second down and ten. McGrath to the left, Lynch to the right. Shotgun formation, Ken. And across the middle, complete pass. That'll gain about uh, seven or eight yards. He dropped the ball, so they're going to call it an incomplete pass. The ball comes down. All right. What, what, what they had was a shotgun formation kit, and that's something new that we haven't seen also. And what they want to do, yeah, you, you were talking about uh, uh, defenders getting on uh, Scott very quickly. Shotgun formation is designed to get Scott back in the formation and be able to give him a quicker release. Peter Lawler was intended receiver. Uh, and the ball was there, but he did not hang on to it. Third and 10 for Han. And a screen, it looks like, set up on the near side, and Lynch gets the ball and brings it forward. Not enough for a first down. That'll bring up fourth down. Balled about the 43, and he's gonna need a good four yards for a first. But we're down to 2.15 left in the ball game. But here's the game, Cap. Here's the game, it's fourth down, hands down by six, fourth and down at about five. And we'll go for it because we're down close to two minutes. Fourth and about five. Emerson looking to throw across the middle of McGrath, and he is short of a first down. Notre Dame will get the ball back. Complete pass to number 80, McGrath, who tried to cut back toward the middle, but he did not have enough yardage for the first down. Now, Ken, I have been watching. How many timeouts has he and Paul thus far? Do you know? One I know of. So that means they have two more. Uh, what we're going to see Notre Dame do is just what we've seen them do uh, this whole fourth quarter. Uh, they're going to run power uh, offense, uh, uh, punch the ball, tackle a tackle. Uh, what Hans got to do is get some penetration, hope to shake that ball loose. If they don't, and, and Notre Dame is in, is unable to get a first down, Han will be able to get the ball back because they have two timeouts left. We're uh, down to 145 left in the game. And off this time, and tackled in the backfield immediately. That was uh, Malik who shot the gap and threw his man for a yard loss. And that's what you're going to see right now. You're going to see the linebackers shooting the gaps. You're going to see, you're going to see some, some slanting by the defensive linemen because what they've got to do, get in the backfield, shake that back up as soon as he gets the ball and make him cough up the ball. They did not want to take the time out there. Uh, they wanted to wait till the uh, uh, third down play. And the clock is rolling down to 110 left in the ball game. Notre Dame in between plays is going to take, take their time. They want to run that time off the clock. Second down and 11. And the ball is almost uh, mishandled in the backfield. Snowdunner 
corner for a loss. Rod the quarterback Dezimo almost lost that ball. Rod DeZemo almost took, off the, took the handoff himself in the backfield. We're inside of a minute left, and Daniel Hand takes their second timeout. That'll bring up third down and 13. With inside of a minute left in this ball game, Notre Dame leading 28-22. What was that signal? Daniel Hand has uh, burned a timeout here uh, after they stopped the man in the backfield. That'll bring up third and 13 for Notre Dame. And I believe they've got one left. If they can stop this play, Jerry, they'll call out and get, That's the, right. get the ball back. They will get the ball back. What they've got to do is stop him here. All right, formation. Hand has got all their men up close. And they stopped in the backfield. Oh, they're going to get it for a face mask. That's going to give them a first down, Ken. A flag is thrown at the 50. They're, they're, they're going to give a face mask against Hand. So two defenders for Hand came in and made the tackle. But I won't give him a first down, though. Jerry, uh, that was a valiant try, but uh, that should allow Notre Dame to run out the well, clock. What Han was trying to do is make something happen in the backfield. I, di I didn't see the face mask. I, I saw the arm wrap around the head. I didn't see the face mask. Never left to call the face mask. And we got another flag thrown before the play starts, and they may call out on the hand bench. Oh, that's Bush League. There's, there's 40 seconds left to go. That The official shouldn't worry about what's going on on the sideline. He should worry about what's going on in the field. <laughs> I think somebody on the hand sideline told the yeah. near side referee he needed new glasses. Well, I'll tell you what, that referee better get off the field real quick before <laughs> the game is over. With that uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against hand, pushes the ball clear to the 20, and the clock only has 39 ticks left. But uh, Hand has played one whale of a football game tonight and uh, has showed us a lot against the number one team in the state. Not only did they play a whale of a football game, uh, but, but they really should have beaten this team tonight. And I don't think anybody in the state thought that Hand was capable of doing it, but the players and the coaching staff knew that they were capable of doing it, and they showed it tonight because the only difference uh, in this game is, is some mistake, it's mistakes and some penalties. Hand has moved the ball, Hand has stopped these guys, and they're only down by six points right now. And they still want to play. Hands on the field, they, they, they want to continue to play this ball game because they feel that they can win this game. Well, uh, that's the way to play uh, football is to, uh, until every dog is dead, uh, stay right at it. But uh, uh, the clock uh, has wound up and is rolling again, and we're inside of 30 seconds left in the ball game now. All, all Notre Dame has to do is touch his knee to the ground. I believe Han has one more timeout, but it doesn't matter because they have four plays. Uh, uh, and they, they're just, they're just going to run the, uh, uh, the clock down. And now the referee calls a delay of game penalty against Notre Dame with 14 seconds left. So they'll take one snap and kneel down, and the final score will remain 28 to 22. But uh, Notre Dame knows that they were in a ball game tonight. And Notre Dame is taking a timeout before they get this last play going. And I think everyone uh, wearing black tonight uh, should be very proud of themselves. Uh, this was a tremendous, tremendous game played by all the hand Tigers. So Notre Dame took a timeout uh, with 14 seconds left, and they'll take one more snap and kneel down to seal this game. And that should be uh, the final play. The clock is down to five seconds and running. And Jerry, a tremendous football game tonight. An excellent crowd uh, it really was. supporting the Hand Tigers, and they it's, played well. It's a tribute to this Hand team. It's a tribute to the coaching staff that they didn't come in here with their tail between their legs, expecting they could float out like everybody else thought they were going to be flown out. Super, super job by Hand. And this, this is the type of effort that they needed coming into the Stratford game. Some of the injuries are going to be healed by next weekend. They're not going to be up to full steam, obviously, but they're going to have some players back, both Stratford and Guilford. Uh, have, have great teams this year, and Han uh, uh, still has an opportunity, even with this loss, to have a league, league championship. And don't forget that Notre Dame is is, is in a different league. Stan, uh, Han still has, depending on, on the outcome of the Stratford-Guilford game, an opportunity for a state bid. And uh, Stratford is 7-0 and going into the game this weekend, so they're a tough team next week. And then, of course, the Guilford game Thanksgiving Day. 
This is Kent Sprague with uh, Jerry Johnson. Our thanks to Frank Tordoff tonight to help keep some statistics for us. Uh, Paul Sprague behind the camera and Lynn Richards uh, producing and uh, directing and doing all the other things. Uh, we say good night from Strong Field where Daniel Hand Tigers uh, took on the number one ranked team in the state, uh, Notre Dame of West Haven, and actually had a lead on them in the third quarter and had a chance to win this game, but uh, finally came out on the short end, 28 to 22. Notre Dame of West Haven beats Daniel Hand. Good night.